Welcome back, ladies and gentlemen. This is Law 254, your favorite legal show that seeks to demystify the law, give you useful tips and guidance on how you can interact with the law, basically putting the law in your hands. My name is Wakili Kiti. I'm an advocate of the High Court. So the past few weeks, not even the past few weeks, the past few months have been hard for employers. Guys are laying off left right and center you know it's 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 hard to to come by employee salaries it's hard to keep running enterprises so as a consequence of which uh, employers are downsizing their workforce and understandably so because they're in business you wouldn't expect them to uh, to continue paying when when there's no return on investment so that's why they they lay off many employees and and i'm sure out there there are so many employees who have been laid out the economy is hurting uh, so today we decided to interrogate uh, the procedure for being laid off or, or or being terminated on account of redundancy so ordinarily being terminated on account of redundancy means that the employer either no longer requires your service your services have either become obsolete or your services are not uh, bringing any economic value to them uh, as the employer. So that notwithstanding, there are certain thresholds that the law has uh, uh, entrenched in the Employment Act under Section 40 to ensure that you as the employee, your interests are covered. So whenever an employer wants to lay you off, there's a standard procedure in which they need to follow. And if they do not follow that procedure, then they're in breach of the law and also of, of, of natural laws of justice, and that is to, to not condemn you unheard. So the procedure goes like this. Number one, they have to give you notice. Uh, they have to give you uh, one month's notice that they're intending uh, to lay you off. And in the absence of that notice, they will need to pay you one month salary in lieu at least one month salary, so it could be more, at least one month salary in lieu of that notice. Number two, they need, if you're a unionizable employee, that means by being a unionizable employee, it means you are under a union and the employer has signed something called a collective, collective bargaining agreement with your union. So if you're a unionizable employee, the employer has a duty one month prior to terminating you on, on account of redundancy to have notified your union of the reasons for, for, for termination uh, on account of redundancy and the extent. So they will, they will communicate it to them and tell them, hey, we're experiencing hard financial times, or hey, we're changing our business model to this and this and this, and, and consequently, we'll be looking at laying off this number of employees, so the extent, this number of employees, and also this now is the reason. So at least your, your union will be in the loop on what is impending. So if, you're, if you've been laid off and, and your employer has not notified your union and your unionizable employee, there's a breach there. So it's, it, it can be nullified on account of unprocedural, unprocedurality. All right? So other than notifying the union, it is always compulsory to notify the labor office of the region in which uh, the employer has set shop. So they also, the, if you're a unionizable employee, they must notify your union and they must notify the labor office. If you're not a unionizable employee, your employer, your employer has a responsibility to notify you personally that they, they're intending to lay you off one month prior to laying you off and also notifying the labor office uh, of the same. All right? And, and, and if, you, uh, if you, you end up getting laid off, you are entitled to payment of all your leave days. So in the course of your working, maybe you've worked for your employer for five years or 10 years, there's been accumulated leave days that you've not been making use of. They need to tabulate that, calculate that, and pay you your leave days as part of your terminal dues. They also need to pay you something called severance pay. So severance pay is for laying you off. I mean. Um, once you're laid off, you're entitled to severe severance pay because you need to go and start elsewhere. This is something that you're not anticipated. This is something that is not 
as a result of your misconduct or anything that's coming out from, from you in a, in a negative sense, but they've decided to lay you off. So you're entitled to severance pay. Severance pay is 15 days uh, salary. So for instance, if you were being paid 100,000, your severance pay will be 50,000 for all the years uh, that you've worked. So each year, 50,000. So if you've worked for seven years, 50,000 times, times seven. So you're entitled to that. And uh, what else are you entitled to? You're also entitled to uh, any other gratuity payments, if at all they're there. So if you're not a unionizable employee, you are entitled to fav no, less, no less favorable terms than employees who are unionizable. What do I mean? You could be an employer in, in that organization, but whilst other employees are under a union, you, you are not. When redundancy visits you, you should be given the same terms as those people who are under the, the union. So in, in the event that you've been terminated and not given favorable terms, or you've not been paid your severance, your severance pay, or you still have outstanding leave days that you've not been paid for, or any other gratuitous payment that you're entitled to, that means the employer has not followed the right procedure and you can seek you can claim, uh, you can lodge a memorandum of claim and claim for what is, uh, is duly yours. Kindly note that this procedure is not applicable to companies that are winding up. This is just companies that are, continu are continuing as, as going concern, but have decided to lay off. So if a company is winding up altogether, there's a separate procedure uh, that is followed for, 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 for its employees to claim. So that's it. Uh, I hope this is going to give you a soft landing. I know it's been hard times out here, but, uh, but the, law, the law is looking out for you. That's law 254. In case you have any issues surrounding employment matters, whether you're an employer who seeks to st streamline your, your termination processes, or you're an aggrieved employee who was terminated and procedurally, you're terminated uh, and condemned and hard, uh, as Law 254, we'll be happy to listen to your story and we'll be happy to help. Thanks and may God bless you.